in his house to worship him. So before we go forward in the uh, order of service, let's acknowledge him as our Lord and Savior by giving him the round of applause he deserved. Not me, but that he deserved. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, the, uh, the word of God says that we should come with joyful, glad hearts into his assembly. If you're not in a joyful and glad state of mind, let me let you know a little secret. Just stick around long enough because the Spirit's already here. And if you allow the Spirit to come to you and cling to you and enter into you, your spirit will get higher and higher. Amen? Let's go into praise and worship. Amen? Amen. Good morning and praise the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in our mouth. Amen. Lord, thank you for another day. Yes, God. Hallelujah. 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 
praise you. Lord, we worthy. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, he is good. Hallelujah. And we bless his holy name. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes, God. Yes, God. We thank you for a new season. Amen. And a new day. God is doing things in the lives of his people. Amen. So prepare yourself for your new season. Hallelujah. It's a new season, it's a new day, a fresh anointing is flowing my way, it's a season of power and prosperity, it's a new season. Come into me. Yes, it's a new season. It's a new day. A fresh anointing. Yes, it's flowing your way. Season of power and prosperity. It's a new season, yes. It's a new season. It's a new season. It's a new season. It's a new season, yeah. It's a new season, yeah. All that was stole from you will turn to you a hundredfold. Tried in the fire, but you're coming out. Go, yeah. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Yeah, yeah. It's a new season. It's a new day. A fresh anointing, yeah. It's flowing our way. It's a season of power and prosperity. It's a new season. Yes, God. It's a new season. Yes, Lord. It's a new season. It's a new season. Yeah. It's a new season. It's a new season. Yeah. All that was stolen is returned to you a hundredfold. Tried in the fire, but you're coming out. Go. Yeah. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Yeah. In the famous words of Diana Ross, I'm, yeah, coming out. Yeah. I want the world to know we got to let it show I'm yeah coming out yeah I'm coming I'm yeah out yeah yeah I'm coming I'm coming out I want the world to know I got to let it show I'm coming It's a new season, yes. It's a new day. Fresh anointing, yes. It's flowing our way. It's a season of power and prosperity. It's a new season coming to 
me. Yes, God, it's a new season coming to me. It's a new season coming to me. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord, church. Hallelujah. She said, it's a new season coming to me. And I declare and decree and stand on that. Amen. Hallelujah. She even broke it down a little bit further. She said, she's coming out. I don't know what you're battling, but you're coming out. This is a new, a new season that we're declaring right now. You can't stay in the old. You can't stay there in that darkness. You got to come up out of it. Don't allow the devil to hold you down. This is a new season. If you don't believe that, then why are you sitting here? Because I'm telling you, as surely as you sit here right now, the Lord will bring you up out of that old thing. Stand firm on that new thing. Oh, praise the Lord. I, 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 I think, hallelujah. Praise and worship. Praise and worship. See, the praise makes the noise. It's that quiet thing that we do in worship that makes it all worthwhile. Got to make a lot of noise for worship. God sees your worship. But that's what I want. If, if, if I can, somebody needs to hear this. Somebody needs to hear this. Somebody needs to know that no matter how much you worship, no matter how much you praise, if you are still holding on to idols, And I need you to understand that it's not a little silver or gold object that you're worshiping. It's not a, a piece of rock or a metal that you're worshiping. But it's something that's going to continue to hold you back from that new season because you refuse to stop idolizing it and putting it before God. I don't know what it is. I don't know who it is. I don't know where it is, but if you are idolizing something before God, you'll never get to see that new season. You'll never get to enter in through the gates of heaven because you're putting forth something before God that is false. I don't know who needed to hear that. Maybe I just need to reflect that back on myself. But I'm telling you right now, that new season is here. It's right now. Call on it. Jump into it. Declare it and decree it. Amen, amen, amen. Whew. That just goose me. You come forth and give us an altar prayer now. Praise God as you come to the altar on today. Come casting your cares on him for he cares for you. He loves you. Hallelujah. And we need him more now than ever. For it is a new season. It's a new day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessings are coming our way. Hallelujah. Whatever it is today, leave it at the altar. Don't take it back with you. So let us go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, as we come before your throne room of grace on this morning, we come thanking you, Lord God, for who you are, Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, are all in all in our everything. And we say thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for being in your presence on today, your precious presence, Lord God. Rain down on us, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, let your blessings flow throughout this house, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, throughout every household that's represented in this place and over the airways, Lord God. 
bless Lord in the name of Jesus for Lord God we need you right now we need your presence, Lord. We need you to breathe on us, Lord God. For we thank you for breath on today. We thank you that we had a blessed night's sleep and you woke us up this morning and you started us on our way, dear God. We say thank you. We thank you for allowing us to make it to the house of prayer, Lord God, where we can get prayer, Lord God, where we can get the word, Lord God, where we can meet you, hallelujah, and know you for ourselves, dear God. If there's someone here that don't know you in the part of their sin, give them the will to serve you, Lord God, for who wouldn't serve a God like you? Healer, hallelujah, deliverer, hallelujah, keeper, hallelujah, thank you, Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Hallelujah, omnipotent, hallelujah, omnipresent, hallelujah, everywhere at the same time, taking care of every need, looking after each and every one of us when we don't even look after ourselves the way that we should. You're right there, Lord God, and we thank you, Lord God. We ask you to bless us, Lord God, in every area of our life, mentally, physically, spiritually, financially, Lord God. We need you in each of those areas, Lord God. We can't do it without you, dear God. Hallelujah. There's someone on their sick bed today. There's someone in the hospital today. Lord God, that needs you right now, Lord God, to take care of them. What well, you even said in Psalms 30 and 2 that we cried out to you and you healed us, Lord God. We're looking for healing today in the name of Jesus. But Lord, we know that you care for us because you said it in your word. You said, Lord, in your word that we can look to the hill from which cometh our help. For all of our help come from you, Lord God. There's someone today that's seeking your face, Lord God, more now than ever, Lord God. We're just wretched, undone, Lord God. But you, hallelujah, can bring us through, dear God. Whatever the trial, whatever the tribulation, whatever the circumstance, you are a very present help in the time of trouble, in the time of need. And Lord, we say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We worship you today, Lord God. We praise you today, Lord God. With our own mouths, Lord God, do we give you praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for this place and each and every person in it, Lord God. There's someone that need a touch today from you, Lord God. And I know, Lord God, that you are right here. Well, you said you'd never leave us nor forsake us. You said you would be with us always, even until the end of time. And we say thank you. Now, dear God, we ask you to bless the angel of this house, dear God, and the one that's to come after him, Lord God. Bless, prepare the way, Lord God, that we may be in the hands, Lord God, that you want us to be in, Lord God, that you would have us to worship you, Lord God, in spirit and in truth, dear God. And we say thank you. Thank you, Lord God, for our angel here, Lord God. Pastor Carl A. Lucas Sr., Lord God. Sister Evelyn Lucas, Lord God. The honor, Carl, Lord God. The grandbabies, Lord God. Bless them in the name of Jesus. Bless everyone that's attached to them, Lord God. Because I believe that everything that's attached to them wins, Lord God. But we are winners, Lord God, in you. And we thank you for the blood, the blood. The blood, yes, Lord, thank you for the blood. Hallelujah, hallelujah, yes, Lord. As we cry out to you, Lord God, we're casting our cares on you, Lord God. We're asking forgiveness right now in the name of Jesus because according to your word of first God, you will forgive us, Lord God. And we thank you for being a forgiving God. We thank you for your only begotten son hanging out there on that old rugged cross on Calvary. He hugged, he bled, he died. Hallelujah, he was buried, but he rose again on that third day. Hallelujah! With all power in heaven and earth in the palm of his hand, I say thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 
Now, Lord God, bless the one that would break the bread of life on today, Lord God. But, Lord God, we speak life right now. We speak life into your people. We speak life into our lives, Lord God. We thank you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We magnify you, Lord. We glorify you, Lord. We give you the honor, Lord God. We give you the praise, Lord God. Hallelujah. And let us continue to worship you, Lord God, on this day and each and every day. For today is the first day, Lord God, of the rest of our lives, Lord God. And we thank you. We praise you. We magnify you. We glorify you. We give you the honor. We give you the glory. We give you the praise. As we come down from this place, we say hallelujah. A most high praise to a most high God. Hallelujah. 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 In Jesus' name, we call it done. Amen. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is worthy. God is worthy. Hallelujah. He is so worthy. Hallelujah. I told you, if you didn't come in with a spirit that was already focused on the, on the spirit, he'll focus in on you. And so if you're not at that point yet, that's all right. I'm going to prove to you right now the spirit is in the place. When you woke up this morning, did you do it on your own? Oh, you may have opened up your eyes, but didn't somebody open your eyes for you? You looked in your closet, you had options. But guess what? You had options. The spirit is here. Oh, you didn't do all this on your own. And I'm going to give you another reason why the Spirit is here. Because normally we go in an order, a sequence of the way we do things. But I'm going to tell you right now. The pastor of this fine church is going to come and break the bread of life for us right now. Because the Spirit says so. Prepare yourself for Pastor Paul A. Lucas. Amen. Amen. There's no one like you. Amen. We want to go into the word of God. Amen. I don't have much voice, so I'm going to stay to the script. Is that all right? First Corinthians, the 14th chapter. If you have it, say amen. 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 First Corinthians, 14 chapter. Amen. Starting at the 19th verse, uh, Paul, 
says to the Corinthian church, if the Lord is willing, however, I will come to you soon. And then I will find out for myself the power which these proud people have and not just what they say. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of words, but of power. Let's talk this morning from kingdom power. Kingdom power. Father God, I ask right now that you allow me to deliver this your word. I pray, Father, that it will stir in your people what it stirred in me. For I believe, Father, this is a Raymond word from on high. But I pray that the people see none of me but all of thee. I decrease so that thou may have the increase. In Jesus the Christ's name we pray. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Now, just a couple of weeks ago, we celebrated the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The resurrection is what the believer, the power of the, that released the power of the kingdom. Prior to the resurrection, no one could enter the kingdom of heaven. In order to the, enter the kingdom, one must be without sin and holy. Since all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, it took a perfect sacrifice. Jesus, who lived a sinless life, offered his life as an atonement or an acceptable sacrifice for our sins. The resurrection is good news. The price has been paid. The penalty of sin has been satisfied. Matthew 28 and 18, let us know Jesus declared that all authority of heaven and on earth has been given to him. In Luke 10 and 19, he gave us authority over all the powers of the enemy and nothing can hurt us. The, re the resurrection sealed the deal. Stay with me, I'm going somewhere. Our Savior could be held, he couldn't be held down not even death nor the grave could keep him in the ground. First Corinthians 15, starting at 54, death was swallowed up in victory. 55 said, O oh, death, where is thou sting? O oh, grave, where is thou victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be unto God that giveth us victory through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. The resurrection sealed the deal. Believers, we have a right to have kingdom power. Now, kingdom power gives the believer power over the devil and his demons. In Mark, the 16th chapter, it says, And these signs shall follow them that believe in me. In my name shall they cast out devils. In Acts 16, Paul cast a demon out of a spirit of girl who, who owner was making money out of her. Uh, a prophet, she was profitable to her owner, but Paul cast out the demon. She acknowledged Paul and the other disciples as being real men of God. Paul got a little agitated and he rebuked her and he said, in the name of Jesus, come out of her. And the spirit left. Kingdom power give you power to cast out demons. In Mark 5, Jesus met a man who lived in a tomb who no one could restrain, not even chains. He said, come out of him, and the spirit left the man, went into the pigs, and fell over a cliff and drowned. Let me tell you, if you got kingdom power, you got demon casting power. Kingdom power also give us power over sickness and disease. That's the same text in Matthew, Mark 16. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any daily thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and the sick shall recover. Can you believe that kingdom power give us power over sickness? On Acts 3, Peter and John was going into the temple to offer alms, and, and there was a man outside the gate called Beautiful asking for alms, and Peter looked at him and said, Peter, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have I freely give unto you. Take up your bed and walk. The man was born crippled, but he took up his bed and walked. Kingdom power give us healing power. Need somebody to get this today. Uh, it's at the moment we accept Jesus. Jesus as our personal Savior, the Holy Spirit lives in us. That the, the, the Holy Spirit is the catalyst to give us kingdom power. 
Jesus spoke of the kingdom power in St. John 14 and 16, when he says, and I will pray to the Father, and the Father will send you another comforter that will abide with you forever. In the 16th chapter of St. John, Jesus said, I must go so the comforter could come. He said, it's good for me to leave because otherwise the advocate can't come. When Jesus was here, the spirit was where Jesus was. But now that Jesus is gone, the spirit of God is present in every believer. But every believer don't execute kingdom power. Acts 1 and 8 says, but ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come. Now the Greek word for power is the, in the text is called dudamus. Dudamus refers to ability, your ability to accomplish things. Deuteronomy said, I could take things and make it happen. Deuteronomy says, I have the right to do things. The question is, what effect do your power have? Is it kingdom power? Can you perhaps, I should I say, do you exercise kingdom power? When life happens, when things happen unexpectedly, do you execute your kingdom power? Face, when you face with trials and tribulations, do you execute your kingdom power? Every believer has been endowed with the Holy Spirit. But every believer doesn't activate kingdom power. It's like your car. You can have the key in the ignition. Turn it halfway. You can listen to the radio. May be able to roll down the window. But you won't be able to go. You see, you may have power, but you don't have all the power some of us been walking around with half power and the lord's telling me today you need kingdom power you you probably have a you you probably seen a transformer somewhere close to your house you, you probably know that the transformer have 7200 votes coming in on the top side but the transformer transformed the 7,200 votes into 240 that goes into a line that's tapped into your service drop, which goes into your house. Not only do 240 goes into your house, but it goes into your breaker box. And from your breaker box, you run lines and the lines go 120 or 240, depending on what you need. But I found out if you try to use a, a, two, a 120 when you need 240, it won't work. It'll blow the breaker. Can I talk to you today? Some of you blowing your breaker because you're using half power. You're not using all the power God has blessed you with. But if you hold on a little while longer, I believe kingdom power is at your stead. May I suggest to you that the devil is not playing fair. If you are a child of God, if you are a 120 saint and you get an unexpected report, if you are un, if you are 120 saint and you get a tripped up on what you was expecting to do, your breaker is gonna bust. Your faith will fail. I consider 120 saints as half saints. You got power, but you don't have kingdom power. What you need is a 240 saint. You need all the power God has released to you. And just in case you need more power, you got to re realize the 240 is hooked to the 7200. And the 7200 is hooked to the 156,000. And the 156,000 is hooked to the general. Can there anybody know that you got power at your disposal? But you got to execute the power because the kingdom of God is looking for some kingdom people. I hear so many believers talking about power. There's probably no one here who has not been told they need to exercise the power that's in them. It may have been said a different way, but I'm confident that if you've been saved more than two weeks, somebody told you you need to execute your faith or exercise your power. Just about with every altar call, in every prayer, we decree a thing, we declare a thing, we bind, we loose, we cast down, we build up, we speak over our circumstances, we tell the enemies he have no authority in our life, but sadly, situations don't change. 
Sadly, many people looking into the church speaking life issues that need 240 and they only operating with 120. But they only concentrate on what they can do versus who they can do it with. Let me slow down. Our text says, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of words, but of power. Corinthian was an important city in the Roman rule society. It was located between two bodies of water, which meant merchants was coming and going always in and out of port. Corinthian was an important city for the Roman rule society. It was a busy city. There was always visitors and travelers stopping by. And the Corinthians had been corrupt by all the attention. I believe the church leader was trying to impress people by claiming what school they attended. Some said they went to the school of Apollos. Others said they went to Cephas. And then there was those who said they went to the Pauline school. Now, Paul, on his second missionary journey, has spent 18 months in Corinth. He had established the church. They knew what he was teaching but yet he got a report. And after the report, he had, after he established his church and he got the report, Paul writes a letter to the Corinthians. And he wanted them to know that God is not looking for a divided church. He's looking for a unified church. God is looking for people in the church that's fighting for the same thing. But the people in the church were fighting over who baptized them who taught them, who discipled them. And God was, and Pete, Paul was trying to tell them, you need to be combined and you need to be in one. Divided, we, I mean, when we're divided, we will not stand, but when we get together, we'll stand forever. It's at the place right now that the church of God is being divided because one people say you need to speak in tongues and another one say you need to be baptized this way. But God say confess with your mouth and believe in your heart the Lord Jesus and you shall be saved. I come today to tell you that some people don't have power because they're too busy trying to discourage me. But let me come today to tell you when you got kingdom power, it's not about discouraging me. It's about elevating him. Because when you elevate him, he will open doors that's been shut. He'll give you blessings that you didn't stand in need of. Paul heard of the plight he wrote a letter urging them to be of one mind and one purpose. Instead of inviting over loyalty for an individual, he said you need to combine with pleasing God. He could have quoted Galatians 1 and 8, but even if we are of an angel of heaven, come preaching anything but this gospel, let them be accused. In other words, Paul said, if anyone preach anything but what's in the book, let them be accused. Then he goes on to tell them, he said, I need to educate you about Christian character. He said, I need to let you know what Christian character looked like. He spoke about the division. He could have quoted, he addressed the proper use of spiritual gifts. And he told them specifically how to operate with the gift of tongues in the congregation. Paul gave them instructions because they were fighting over primary things. But now in our text, he'll address a desire to come back to Corinthians, but he acknowledged it was up to the Lord will if he made it back. Somebody need to get this. His reason for wanting to come was to see the powerless leaders who was prideful and to see if in fact they had power. Can I stop for a minute and tell you, Paul said, Lord, I, I want to come back to you, but it's God's will. Some of you don't understand everything you want to do in the name of God. He's not going to let you do because some things he will for you to do something else. Remember in Acts 16, Paul wanted to go preach in Ephesians to encourage them. But God was leading him to Galatia where God wanted to start a new church. You might remember in Acts 8, Philip was preaching to a citywide revival. Peter, people, 3,000 souls had came, but God sent them to the desert to talk to one man. I need somebody to understand God's got some plans for you to get you to an expected place. And sometimes you don't get the right the directions. Let me slow down. In football, Lyman are in place to block. 
they are not what we call skilled positions. Their job is to block. Now the lineman is not allowed to catch the ball or go beyond the line of scrimmage. I, I think I'm right, I think I'm right. If a lineman goes down the field, they get penalized for an ineligible player down the field. However, if they report to the referee, they become eligible. Now, I, I don't know, I never played football, but I realized something when they do that, the referee will reach in his pocket and throw a flag. It means that there's a penalty and now you're gonna be penalized. Linemen are surely capable of catching the pass. They have the ability, they have the power to catch the pass, but they don't have the authority. Stay with me for a minute. John 1 and 12 says, but as many as receive him, to them he gave the power to become sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. In this passage, the word power is used just like it was on our text. But in Greek, the same word can have a different meaning depending on its context. In our text, power comes from the word dunamis, which means ability, which we get our word dynamite, which means it's capable of doing something. No matter who holds the dynamite in their hands, it's powerful, it's capable of blowing up. But if an untrained or unauthorized person get dynamite in their hands, they have a greater chance of hurting themselves, messing things up, or blowing up something that what they weren't supposed to. Now in John 12, the word power comes from the Greek word exousia, meaning to be capable and authorized. It means to be legally sanctioned to perform a task. In the Corinthian church, some people was capable of, religion, of delivering religious words. They may have been capable of praying for some people. They may have been capable of performing religious acts, but they wouldn't authorize. That's why Paul said he wanted to come to Corinth and find out for himself what power those people had or were they just talking. I can imagine Paul, he didn't want to come to judge them because Paul said himself in Colossians 2 and 16, let us, let us judge no one. So Paul was not coming to judge them. He was just coming to be a fruit inspector. So, so even though we don't judge, we can inspect the fruit. If it looked like a tree, it need to be a tree that it looked like. So Paul said, I'm coming to Corinth to judge or to, 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 to fruit inspect so I can see whether or not you got any power. Uh, can I give you a practical application for the day? And I'll sit down. Some people like the Corinthians. You're performing religious acts. You may speak religious words. You may have an eloquent speech or cute prayer, but you're not authorized. If your worship is not real, you are not authorized. If you seek your own glory, you are not authorized. If you don't love everybody, you're not authorized. Jesus said in John 13, 34 and 35, a new commandment I give you to love one another. And I have loved you, so you must love one another. But, this, but by this, everyone would know that you are my disciples if you love one another. If you don't love one another, you may be cooking, you may be looking and sounding religious, but you're not authorized to carry this word. If you can't tell that you are his, if we can't tell that you are his disciples, you are unauthorized. You are just like the lineman down the field. You deserve a penalty. I know somebody saying, Pastor, you can't tell me I'm not authorized. Check the book. Go ahead. I'm going to throw the flag. If God doesn't get the glory, you're not authorized. If you have the kingdom power problem, you should, if, if problems perplex you, 
you're not authorizing. If, dis if, if discouragement make it difficult for you, you're not authorized. If circumstances confuse you, you're not authorized. If demons destroy you, you're not authorized. If enemies defeat you, you're not You're not authorized. If burdens crush you, you're not authorized. Why should kingdom power come? Why? Because kingdom power comes from God, and God has omnipower. All power is in his hand, and if you're in his hand, you got kingdom power. If not, you deserve the flag. As a matter of fact, let's check the replay. Now, I had a red flag. But Sister Lucas brought a scarf. So we won't throw the red flag. But we're going to check the replay. Do you pray? Does your prayer get answered? Can people see Jesus in you? Are you a student of the word? Will you still serve God if your income goes down and your outcome look bad? Again, can people see Jesus in you? You know Jesus. He's the one we call Mary's baby. I call him my savior. Uh, Jesus did it for you. He the one, he's the one who came to die for you. When he spoke, nothing became something. When he spoke, something became nothing. You remember the fig tree? Uh, when he prayed, little became much. You remember the 5,000? Yeah, 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 yeah. When, when he spoke, blind was able to see. Lame was able to walk. You know, Jesus, when the women who had an issue for 12 years, uh, when she touched his garment, her issue was a thing of the past. You, you know, Jesus, you, you know the one I'm talking about. When he prayed, Lazarus came from the grave. I'm talking to somebody today. When he died, the sun refused to shine. The stars left their civil socket. The moon image in blood. The earth shook viciously. You know, Jesus, when he got up, he took the sting from death. He took the victim from the grave. But thanks be to God, he sent his only begotten son to die on a tree for a sinner like, you know, God. He's the one who has celestial power. He considered the heavens. He's the one that got creative power when you consider the earth. He's the one that got destructive power. You remember the flood? He's the one that got ancient power. You remember the past. He's got universal power. You remember the present. He's got eternal power. Can you remember the future? If you don't know him, I recommend him to you. You need kingdom power. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The pastor talked about kingdom power today. Talking about power that we have, but some of us just don't use. Do you want to use this power? Do all those things in which has been declared and decreed already that we can do. Matter of fact, Christ said greater things we will do than him. He said that in his word. But you can't do it. If you don't touch and tap into that power, that kingdom power. Do you know who Jesus is? Do you know him as your personal savior? If you don't, this is an opportunity right now to get to know this man that gives you power. Unlimited. Great. And to use for the will of God. Right now is an opportunity. If you don't know him to come forth, to get to know this man, to get to share into that power, to become joint heirs with him in the highest of the highest realms because he died on the cross for us. He gave up his life, sacrificed himself for us. Nothing he did wrong. Not a guilty bone in his body, but yet he sacrificed himself for us because he loved us enough to do so.